totally forgot to do that. I'm not very good at remembering that, but anyway, let's make guacamole. Um, there are many, many recipes out there. Um, I am still trying and tasting them. Having moved to Texas, um, guacamole has taken on a whole new life to me. Um, but we are going to get going. So I have got some kitchen towel here, which is um, where I'm going to put any rubbish, trash. And then I have my compost bin, which is just out of shot here, um, where we're going to put, let me move. That's actually with the lid well out of the way, um, which is where I'm going to throw bits and pieces from um, all the vegetables that I'm now about to play with. So we're going to start with our avocados and we're just going to uh, cut them in half, uh, slice it round and we're going to get those into, twist them and then that's it done. And we're literally just going to scoop out our avocado and put it into the bowl. I've gone for a flatter bowl because I'm going to see if the stone will scoop out. If it will, that's good. If not, it won't on all of them. So I'll get to show you another way to take that out. Um, back to the flat bowl. Um, because I'm going to use a potato masher, to actually mash it down in a moment. It's easier if you have a bowl with a flatter bottom as opposed to a curved bottom. Um, so just, uh, you'll only do it once with a curved bottom and then you'll be like, didn't really work so well for me. So here we go again. There is a stone in the middle, uh, always of avocado. So you're fairly safe to put your knife through. It shouldn't be able to go straight through. Once again, just scooping out the avocado. I love avocado. Uh, it's one of those uh, things. And look, that stone as well is going to come out. I find it very easy to grow avocado trees from the avocado stone, and they do look very nice, but they never produce fruit, avocado. Um, Apparently that's all to do with the manufacturers and stopping us and all the different things. They don't want us to be able to do that. So I now actually have an avocado tree in my garden um, that I went and got at the garden center. So I'm quite excited. I'm sure it will be a couple of years before I get an avocado, but I have a friend in California, Fallbrook, over there. Oh goodness me, does she have avocado trees, lemon trees, lime trees? Very jealous I am. So this stone I can see is firmly in there. The easiest way is to take your knife and then bring it down squarely onto the stone. Um, it will embed itself, not very far, but it will embed itself. And then we're just going to twist. So, And then we'll literally twist it. And there it is out. So that's your easiest way to get a, of course, getting the knife back out. That's interesting. Um, to get your stone out of your avocado. So here we go. We have all the avocado out. So it's all in there. Now we need to um, stop it from going too brown. So we're going to help ourselves to all lime here. I love limes. I put limes in many things. My favorite, oh, sorry. My favorite, um, Cheesecake is a lime mascarpone cheesecake. I absolutely love that. So we're just going to take the juice from one lime here and get that on to coat everything. Just making sure it's out. Now you do not put citrus in your compost bin. I know I've said that before. I'm going to keep saying it. Um, citrus will stop the process of breaking everything down. That's why we can use it on here. It will stop the decomposition. So do not put it in your compost bin. You do not want that. So there we go. So I'm just moving that to my kitchen towel that's this side, which will be going in the rubbish bin. So finish with that, we can move it. So I'm just gonna make sure that uh, all my avocado has been tossed with the lime juice. Um, 
And if you've got some spare at this point um, floating around in here, depends how juicy your lime is, you can drain it off and then we'll be adding it back at the end. I'm not too fussy right now with how much is in there. So I'm quite happy to actually just leave it and keep going and you know, uh, keep going with the avocado. And my potato masher is not right here. So let me just pick that up. I apologize. Right, so we're just going to mash down um, a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is just add in half a teaspoon of some cumin, cayenne, and salt. I'm thinking I might do a, actually a blab on salt. People um, put, use different salts and um, Salts do actually have different flavors. Now I'm putting a Himalayan salt in here now. I love Himalayan salt. It's meant to be half a teaspoon. It's on a grinder. I roughly know what half a teaspoon looks like. Um, so here we go. And I can, I prefer to under salt, uh, create and then taste and see if I need to add a little bit more anyway. So let's just mash this down like that to get the, uh, KN and the cumin and salt all in it. Now, how much you mash it down is up to you. So you could have a, a very smooth guacamole and you can have one that uh, clearly has lumps of avocado. Um, I would say I'm most probably a fan of having lumps of avocado, but I love avocado. So, um, I'm very happy to get that smooth, creamy sort of texture suddenly. Um, so what I'm looking for really now is, is there any um, areas of lots of KN or cumin? And there isn't, it's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to um, put that to one side now and just leave it. So I'm going to put it over here. Um, I can put this in the wash. Let's get rid of it out of my way. Um, and now what we need to do is add those other few items. Um, now, guacamole traditionally, obviously, is avocado, lime, jalapeno. Um, and since I've lived in Texas, I've learned people put all different sorts of things in there. Um, generally speaking, onion and tomato. And so that's what we're going to actually do today. So I've already um, prepped the onion, as in took it to half an onion for you. And here we go. If I can get into it, pretty good. Obviously I can put that cling film on my kitchen towel with that. When we're chopping an onion, um, always make sure the root, um, which you can see at one end, oops, let's come up like that. Um, you don't cut through and that will hold the onion together for you. And that's quite important because you don't want onion to go everywhere. Um, and if you look at my hands, then they are, let's move like that, there you go. And they're like this. And the reason they're like this is so that the knife, should I slip, is going to go down my fingers. It's not gonna chop the finger off. And an onion can be um, quite a slippery um, vegetable. It has layers and between the layers there is thin membranes and those membranes are very, very slippery. So there's nothing on the outside of this now. I have removed that membrane. So I'm just going to go. The onion needs to be diced. Um, now how big a dice you will dictate by how close together you put the lines across here. Um, and I do not want my onion really um, large. Um, I like it to be um, much smaller. So I'm actually going to make my cuts much nearer. Okay, now that has let them go like that. Now, if you've got a particularly um, juicy onion, then one way to stop your eyes from running, it's an old trick, but it will work for you. And that's just put a teaspoon in your mouth. You may look silly, 
but believe me, it will not cause you to cry because all that juice that actually comes up actually catches onto the metal. The metal attracts it. So you're able to do that. And certainly if you're working with children, onions are one of the things that they don't like just because of the intense smell and the fact it'll affect their eyes. So just put that into your mouth and hold it there and it will be, it will actually help it. So that's a very good tip to try and do. There we go, let's now slice. This is where I'm keeping my, and obviously as wide as I went the other way is as wide as I should go coming this way. Um, I'm gonna to turn to the side because I think that will help that camera angle. Um, there we go. So I've now got all of that. And I don't know if you can see, I've got a board on a board here. Um, the reason I've done that is um, I want the bigger board anyway when I'm doing the vegetables in a minute. But when you're doing the onion, it gets so small. It's actually really easier uh, or much easier to um, just pick the board up and push it in. Um, I'm going to just get rid of that. Now, the end bit here, I'm going to treat slightly differently. I've turned it on its side. I'm going to cut through it. I'm going to just cut a bit at the edge and then I'm going to chuck the root of the onion in my compost. Um, and then these bits here are larger. So I'm literally just going to force them smaller um, using my knife. And that will bring them much more to the dice side. Or oh, drop them on the floor. Now, of course, as I mentioned, it's on a small board. So for me to move this and I'm just putting it in with our guacamole or our avocado and lime as it is at the moment. So uh, the next one we're going to do is the tomatoes. I'm just going to take the top off, throw it in the compost, slice down, and then I'm actually um, taking the seeds out um, for this. So I'm literally going to cut around and once again, the seeds can, and since I'm working with lots of little bits, what I'm actually going to do, I would normally do anyway, so it's silly of me not to, is actually have a little bit of kitchen towel here, because then I can literally just cut, I'm not reaching anywhere, and I can push the last of those seeds out. Um, and then there we go, ready for me to do. So I'm going to do the same with this one. I'll, it's never fun to try and use a knife the wrong way around. I'm going to try and do that for you so you can actually see. It does actually, it's attached here and it's attached there. So once you've got that, you've got it out. So I have not skinned it. Um, if you wanted to skin it, just put it very quickly into some boiling water and that would uh, help you there. Now we're just going to slice through it like that and we're going to go again. Now I am cutting it from inside out and that's because outside, as I've just mentioned, is the skin. And I can tell you the skin's harder to cut through. So it's actually nicer to try and cut through everything um, from the inside of the tomato because the knife will get a long way through and then what you're trying to cut through at the end, you've already got the momentum of the knife going. So there we go. That is one chopped tomato. You see my small board, I'm able to just tip it in. Um, I like things to be easy. Um, busy household. And we don't really want to have to be making life harder for ourselves. Most people I know lead a pretty busy life. So there we go. Just oops, clearly have not cut the other side of that membrane. There we go. One down, and once again, we're just going to cut around the side there and then just pick it out. Right, to do the same again. So I'm just going to cut it, and roughly the width that I'm cutting at is very similar to the width I did the onion. Um, so you can make the onion smaller or larger, it's your own taste. Um, and the chances are you might make it slightly larger if you haven't made your guacamole 
totally puree down, which you can do. Avocado um, becomes very smooth. I use it in chocolate mousses. There's all sorts of things you can use it in that you wouldn't know it was there because actually it is very creamy. So there we go. That's two tomatoes. This is all I need, half an onion. There we go. So as you can see, my tomato that is here now, I'm able to just put it like that straight into my compost. I love my compost. I'm going to just wipe off that board. Because next I am doing the jalapeno, which I have already uh, cut in half. I'm only using half of one. We are... <laughs> We are English, not Texan. Um, and I am amazingly pathetic at heat, but I do enjoy it and I am getting better. So I am only going to put half a jalapeno pepper in my guacamole. So here we go. So I have seeded it. Um, now I am going to chop it with the, this knife, but then I'm going to actually take it even smaller because I would like it for a couple of reasons. One, I do not need a great big bit of jalapeno at all in my mouth. Um, I would be running around the house making a fool of myself if that happened. So, um, but the other reason is the smaller it is, the more it can spread through the guacamole, which is quite important because that really gets a consistent, nice heat going. So I'm going to use my rocker, which we're about to use for the um, cilantro or coriander, if you're in Britain. Um, I'll tell you what I need to do. I need to get a... I'm going to do this. Let me just put a... Uh, I know where I've hidden them, sorry. I'm just going to put one of these under this board so it stops moving. That will make my life definitely a lot easier because I need to be able to. You can see we've got it a lot smaller that way. Now, if I wanted to really bring it down quite small, um, I can use my knife like this and I can get across and it is moving it. And I can also crush it with the side of my knife. Um, so there's lots of ways you can make this smaller. I mean, I'm always going to do it by hand, um, but if you're making a big batch of guacamole, so you've got a party or something, and you want a lot of it, then uh, obviously you can put it through the food processor. Um, but I've missed probably quadrupled right now the amount of pieces that I had um, from when I started. So there we go. I can, I'll add that now, knowing that it's going to Um, and then the last thing to do is some cilantro, coriander. So we're going to just uh, break the ends off. I am going to compost the stalks. If I was putting that into a casserole or something like that, I'd leave the stalks on. Um, but for the sake of my guacamole, I am not going to do that. There we go. Um, I only need, the recipe is saying, a tablespoon of it. Um, so it's not a lot, but it does actually alter the flavor really quite nicely. So I, uh, I recommend, I mean, I'm a fresh girl, so I prefer to see you all um, using fresh coriander. Um, and you know, when you see it in season, you know, freeze it down and, because that's very easy to then, in fact, I bought too much today, so I will be freezing that down. 
Um, I'm also chopping this now on the same board that I just did jalapenos. So any jalapeno heat will also be doing a little bit of transferring over to give my guac a even nicer flavor. There we go. And then the last thing to go in there is some garlic. Um, and I am going to uh, use, I'll move that to there. Let's move this across so you can actually see how it's all come together very nicely. Um, and I have garlic here. Let's grab garlic. Um, so, no, I can't get into it. There we go. <laughs> I am going to put in a couple of cloves. I'm a huge garlic fan. I love it. I love it so much. Um, I put it into an awful lot of things. So we all are, uh, oh, look at these. They're so small, they don't count. That's like one, isn't it? That's not real. Um, let's, uh, I want a big one. Can you tell that I want? One of these large ones, there we go. So I'll put that to one side. And I am going to, let's actually get that in the bin. Might well not the bin, but the compost bin. I'm gonna put that there so that as I work on each one here, I can get rid of them onto a piece of kitchen towel or paper towel as you see here in America. So, I'll just, do you see that? It escaped from me onto the floor. Not very impressed by that. Um, I am not going to literally take the skins off, but I am just chopping those ends off. I'm going to put it into my garlic press. Um, on my uh, Kitchen Basics video, um, I do show you how to, if you don't have a garlic press, how to do it yourself. Um, it is uh, easy enough to do. I am just saving time here today and I'm going to do it this way because the little holes will collect all of the, there we go. And then I'm able to just get rid of all of the Again. Right, so I can just leave all of that now. Get rid of that. And literally I'm going to take my spoon and fold all of those in. I'm just gonna fold them in. And then we're going to leave it at room temperature for an hour um, or so, and just let all those flavors mingle in. Um, now, if you had had some spare lime juice, you could add it back in now. Um, there you go. Guacamole made. Um, let's prep some vegetables and then we can uh, add our guacamole to them. And there we go, we have crudite in it. I'm gonna just leave that on the side. And I'm gonna get rid of this little one now. I'm gonna put this underneath so I can work and it doesn't go flying. And this is where the compost bin really does come into its own. So I'm just moving a load of things out of the way here so that we can uh, work nicely. And I am going to start prepping things and I move this way slightly. Hopefully you can see that plate um, right there, which is where we're going to put our vegetables. If I turn you that way slightly, hopefully you can see. 
Right. Let's, it uh, doesn't really matter where we start. That's one carrot gone. Let's get rid of the uh, celery. I only need a few bits and I'm actually going to go for more um, in the center. And just because I am showing you, I'm going to wash those quickly, just run them under the tap. There we go. I might even pick that carrot up while I'm here. Um, so I'm just going to take off the tops once again into the compost. Never feels so bad when you're putting them into the compost. And when we're looking at crudite, we're looking at um, pieces that you can just pick up and eat. Um, so getting them to a consistent size is a very good plan. And we don't want huge, great big bits. Um, so do look at what you're, how you're cutting it, what you're cutting. Um, and the celery on the outside actually is greener than this. Um, that doesn't worry me right now because if you look over here, I've got sugar snap peas and green beans. And those are green. So this actually adds a variety of color. And then I need to work. Should I go halfway? I'll go halfway. Um, so I'm just uh, getting that. So it doesn't take long to uh, do. And having uh, crudite just available when the children coming from school when you've got guests over and you're just you know chatting while you're finishing off in the kitchen uh, just hanging around at a weekend um, on the side there so that uh, you just put a small amount of dip out you can keep changing out the dip um, and that adds variety as well and dips are very easy to make um, so there we go so we have our pepper moved on, which knows I've moved on, didn't say a word, did I? So there we go. We have our pepper, and I'm just going to uh, take the middle out. It'll actually go out very easily. Um, and if I cut down the lines like that, it will actually bring me in on the joins. So I can then cut down like that. So I end up with none of the white, which is sort of like pith and it's got a slight bit of taste to it you just don't need it there so don't have it there um and it looks so much nicer if we actually do cut it back so there we go that then brings us to our uh, pepper and i'm going to keep the pepper at this size it's not far off what i got my celery had to think there um and I'm going to actually put these down um, so that we get some backs and some fronts. That gives um, a variety on the look on the platter. Um, you've got the dark red from the outside and then the sort of more mottled and different looking red from the inside. So there we go. That's, uh... And then notice as I get, Let's take that. You see, you think you've done it, and then, whoo, you've it and you realize you haven't. Um, I do move my nails back to being safe as you're getting nearer. Um, that's very important. Keeping yourself safe when you're in the kitchen, you know, slips and trips, mopping up water, organizing yourself, knowing where things are. Um, makes a difference and it's uh, nice. So I'm now going to add a green. So I am being fairly, um, I think presentation is very important and you might just as well, um, you know, look at that instead of just ignoring it. I'm not going to throw away this bit because we would eat it as a family. I'm just not putting it on the uh, plate. Um, I'm not putting that on either. So 
I don't need my beans to be perfect. They are fresh organic, but I don't want, um, we'll go this side, ones that look particularly dodgy, which obviously they can do. I'm just taking off the ends and once again that's more to do with aesthetics than it is anything else and you can cut them in half let me spin this round I didn't look there did I sorry there you go um, and that way we're I think I have more let me get the beans all here fairly muddled in there with the sugar snap. So like I said it doesn't take long to do. It, if you put variety out there then people are going to enjoy it. We all like different vegetables generally speaking. Just going to spread those. The shape that you need really is a triangle for the food. Um, so do remember that. Um, well, if you're using a round plate, that's a good point there. There we go. Now these are all washed, but do make sure you have washed them. Um, I tend to purchase organic or be down at the farmer's market to get the different veg, but make sure you are, there you go. Let's throw in some mushrooms. This would horrify my youngest two children, my oldest two, wouldn't mind at all, although there was a time they weren't so keen. Um, just cutting off the very end of the mushroom there. Um, and now I can literally just slice it. I love raw mushroom. Um, I am aware that is an acquired taste. Certainly if you ask my younger children, as I said. Cool. Now if I grind mushrooms up and put them into things, if they can't see them, they'll eat them without batting an eyelid. But if I uh, leave them, oh, different ball game. There we go. And once again, the colour as well is all coming together, which is rather nice. Right, just going to, since one carrot dropped on the floor, I'm just going to run these under the water. Here we go. Um, now I could peel these carrots. Um, certainly in days gone by, I would have peeled these carrots, but they are organic. They are fresh. So a lot of the nutrients and the goodness in carrot is actually in the skin. Um, and the roughage is really good for you. So I'm actually not going to. And a bit like the pepper, where I said, I'm just going to make sure you've got the outside and the inside going. Um, in actual fact, I am making sure that the uh, different color of the orange also shines through at that point, which I really, really enjoy. So I'm just taking the top ends of all of them and then cutting those in half. Carrot does have an amazing flavour, but if all you've ever had are those small ones that look a bit like a thumb, um, ready prepped in the store, I really, I struggle with that flavour. I've tried them, but I don't actually think that is a nice flavour. I certainly don't think it's carrot flavour. Um, but I was lucky enough to grow up always and only eating fresh carrots out of the garden. So I have a very... Uh, 
strong view on this. Now, when you're cutting a carrot, this you'll see all rock and this is flat. So it's easier and safer on knife safety to have it so it's actually on the flat side. Any vegetables that aren't flat, if you take them to a flat, like cut off the ends of the onion, not lodge, just a sliver, but enough to make a flat end. Um, I'm just gonna make these slightly smaller as well. Um, oops, didn't cut that one in half. So that way you're getting the, the different orange uh, colors and nutrients from the skin. Do I want to cut them? Don't I? Do I know? No, I don't. This one definitely gets to be cut. Now I have children of all different ages in this house, so larger bits and smaller bits actually do work for us. It's a lot of carrot, isn't it? Mind you, I've got more mushroom over there. I could have put that out much to the delight of me. Still might, since we will be eating this later. There we go. And then I've got sugar snap peas as well. So um, obviously you can do any vegetables. And I'm just going to take my knife size down slightly. I'm going to get rid of these as well into my compost bin. Here's my compost bin, by the way. Just, it's quite a pretty little thing. Um, and then from there, it's the children's job to uh, move it out to the garden. As I said, I'm just gonna drop my knife size um, because with the sugar snap, I'm just going to take the end and then pull it. Can you see how the string there? And then I'm gonna take the end and pull it and just drop them on the thing. So nipping through, and I could have done that um, not those green beans, but others. Um, and it just lets you get rid of that bit of string if it's there. And that would be the toughest part um, of eating the bee. So I love. Actually, I've done quite well to go all the way through to here without eating anything. So I love raw vegetables more than I love cooked. I just love raw vegetables. I was talking with my my youngest son is uh, 13, seventh grade, and he's doing cooking at school at the moment and hospitality. And he needed that one looks a bit manky, we'll leave that. Um, he needed some potatoes to practice chopping and what have you for class and wanted to take a load. And uh, I said, had he tried raw potato? Because actually I like it. I do. I know it's not necessarily good and a load of it will upset the stomach normally, but I can eat raw potato. He was like, yes, I did try it and it was disgusting. There you go. His taste buds might change. So we're just literally pulling it and we get that uh, bit of, and sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. It also lets you feel the bean. And if you feel vegetables, they should be, um, what's the word? they shouldn't be sort of soft and squishy. Um, even a strawberry that you're about to eat shouldn't be really soft and squishy, then it's past it. Personally, I'd start throwing it in for jam, um, but mix it with some underripe ones as well, because you want the pectin to come in. But, you know, it's, uh, and we're not going to put that one in because of how that looks. But you can feel if food's right or not. Um, I'm doing salmon, poaching it for dinner tonight. And fish is another thing that people assume is slimy. And it really should not be slimy. Um, if it's slimy, then you have a problem. So get used to the feel of food. And then you'll know if it's gone over, if it's tired, if it's decomposing. Um, because at that point, you don't really want to be eating it. Um, and certainly not fresh like this. And the nutrients, I would, I would say don't quote me, but I, and I need to look it up. But uh, I think it's something like three days from being picked. Then there's no nutrients left in the veg anyway. Um, that's why sometimes 
it's better to have frozen vegetables if they're frozen right there at source. And of course, do check that what's in the bag is only vegetables. If they've then got preservatives and this, that, and the next thing, then don't touch them. It should just say peas is the ingredient, not peas and heaven knows what else. Um, so there we go. It's very difficult to talk politely when you've actually got food in your mouth. I must remember not to do that again. Normally I'm not cooking something that I can uh, forget that I'm doing this and I can eat so raw vegetables. Oh. And it's the colours, it's the textures, you know, with your children um, or people who are being a tad fussy over the whole thing. Um, it's the variety of textures and the variety of color that you should be eating every day. If you look at your plate and it doesn't have at least five different colors on, then, you know, I would be concerned. And I think it's very easy to actually um, just stick with what we know, like broccoli and cauliflower and carrots. Um, that gets very boring really quickly. And it's not a balance of nutrition either. So anyway, here we go. We have a, a plate. I'm just going to, if I move it into the middle there, there you go. We've made all the crudités. I'm just pushing them up slightly because um, I'm going to put the uh, guacamole in the middle there. Um, and then that will be ready for um, the kids when they get in from school today, a snack that's just sitting there. Um, and there's different vegetables on there that they all do like. They won't all eat all of them. I, I know that. I will. Um, my husband will, but they won't. So anyway, you can now put a dip there. I suggest you put a small bowl with a little amount of dip, um, and then you can keep swapping out your dip. And the reason I say that is most dips will have a... Um, time on them and it won't be that long before either if it's a cream based a sour cream or something like that then it's not safe to eat anyway um you shouldn't be leaving it out um if you put it out chilled maybe leave it out 30 minutes and then ditch it so that's why i say put a small amount out and then put some fresh um or if it's something like your guacamole it's just going to start going brown on top so um there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. And um, I will be back next Wednesday, 11 o'clock. And look forward to seeing you all then. Bye.